said. I have with me today the sort of the, the victim of uh, the ambiguity in this statute, and I'd like to ask him to address uh, the committee as well. Hey, thank you. Uh, my name is Ken Borton. I'm from uh, Gaylord, Michigan. Uh, I own the snowman cam up there, which is a live webcam uh, attached to my house, pointed out into the yard. Um, it was put there originally to show friends and family downstate the weather conditions up there. I also have rental homes up there. People can see how much snow we have. Um, years ago, I decided to uh, make it a little more interesting instead of just a plywood snowman, so I hung a couple bird feeders out there, and people seemed to enjoy that. They could watch the birds and squirrels. Uh, in 2008, a uh, conservation officer stopped by and said that he'd gotten a complaint by somebody looking at my camera that saw some deer uh, come in. And uh, he looked around, he looked at my operation, uh, he was very apologetic, he said, I'm sorry, I had to follow up on it. It's obvious to me that all you have here is bird feeders. So they're, uh, you know, he saw no issue with that you know, whatsoever. So he left. Uh, a few months later, he came back, uh, I answered the door, and he said, uh, he said, Ken, I'm really sorry, but I've got to ticket you. You know, and I said, well, we had this conversation. You said it was fine. He says, I, I know. He says, I'm sorry. The decision's not mine. It was made for me. This comes out of Lansing. They're tired of the complaints, and I have to ticket you. So I took that to court. Um, the prosecutor that handled it uh, was not happy with the DNR coming forth with the evidence that they said they had. One thing led to another, and uh, the judge wound up throwing it out. And, and as part of that, she also told the DNR that she did not want them coming back to my property without an appointment. She felt that, you know, that it was very improper what was going on. So that was fine. So a year or so later, a uh, DNR officer shows up at my door one day, a different DNR officer. And, uh, you know, I asked him, you know, why he was here. And he says, you know why I'm here. You know, I'm here to ticket you. So I said, well, I've got paperwork from the court. I showed it to him. He goes, well, I don't know how the judge can keep me from coming here. So he says, uh, he said, I'm going to go check this out, talk to the prosecutor. I'll get back with you. Well, he called me later and said, Ken, I want to let you know you won this one. I tried to get a warrant for your arrest, but he refused to issue it, which just absolutely blows my mind. It gives me an idea that, you know, he's really trying to intimidate me here. So that went away. Um, that was in uh, April. In December, he comes back again. And uh, he says, you're, you're getting ticketed, you know, for this. And, uh, you know, and, and in his report, when you read it, he says, you know, I was very cooperative with him, which is true. I was completely cooperative. I was shocked, but uh, very cooperative. Again, he said, you know, he says, I wish you would take this to court and get this law changed because we don't like having to do this either. So uh, we went to, to, went to court. The, uh, the judge decided that, uh, you know, after talking to the prosecution, looking at this whole thing, you know, she realized that she had apple trees. She was probably in violation of this, too, and decided that, uh, that it, the law gave the, uh, the uh, DNR uh, too much discretion and felt that the, the wording was vague. And so she ruled in our favor. Um, I, apparently our prosecutor didn't want to go any further with it, so the DNR asked the attorney general to get involved. So now the attorney general has uh, appealed the case to circuit court, and that's where I'm at right now. I'm waiting to go to circuit court over my bird feeder. Uh, thank you very much, for uh, Representative, for coming in today. Um, uh, I appreciate uh, your diligence in trying to correct this problem. You and I have talked about it uh, a number of times. Uh, looking for questions? Do we have any questions? I would uh, just like to add that uh, uh, at one of the colleges, Representative Lindbergh uh, has a question, we'll get to him in a second. At one of the colleges that I went to speak uh, during my election the last time, at a candidate forum, one of the question was, do you support the baiting ban? or not. And uh, I said, if you look to the right, which is about 10 feet away, there was an open window, and there were deer munching on some turkey food that they had thrown out. I said, you're in violation right there of the law. So it's very difficult to try to uh, get whitetail to leave food al al alone, no matter where it's who's well, what you're feeding and they were obviously feeding turkeys there were turkeys out there and that's what they were feeding and the deer were coming in 
somebody must have went out and chased them away because they ended up missing right after that. Um, Representative Lindbergh. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you for being here. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at your streaming video as right now. I see some squirrels running around on your... Uh, is, is this the area that was a concern, that the area that your cam covers? Right, yeah, that, the cam is mounted to the side of my home, and that snowman that you see there is probably about six to eight feet away from my uh, bedroom window. So it's right up close to my home, and that, yeah, that is the area. Do you, do, you, do you put bird feet on the ground, or is it mostly just? No, it, it, you can probably see, unless a bear has come in and ripped it down, which does happen occasionally, there's a, uh, there's a wire mesh feeder that is hanging from a, uh, a steel line suspended between trees, and it hangs above my head, so I'd say about six to seven feet. And all that's in it are sunflower seeds. And in, in the report from the conservation officer, he stated that that's all that was there was sunflower seeds. So you, you, you weren't spreading like corn on the ground or? Years ago, that was, I used to feed the turkeys. And after the first ticket I received when we went to court, even though the judge said you can continue to feed the turkeys, I decided to stop putting corn out completely. So if you look at pictures from like 2007, you'll see some corn on the ground, but again, a very insignificant amount for the turkeys. I, I'm, I'm having a hard time figuring out w why you got all this attention here. Yeah, I, uh, I think it's from the webcam. In fact, actually, the conservation officer said if you move those bird feeders around to the other side of your house, he said, I probably won't have to come back. So in my mind, I'm thinking it's okay to violate the law on the other side of the house, but not on this side where the camera is. Or don't document that you're violating exactly. the law. Exactly. But it, it, I've always been wide open. Everything's there. Everybody, you can look at that camera 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, if I was you know, doing something wrong, I certainly wouldn't be broadcasting it like that. Yeah. I'm, I... I Thank you, Representative Meadows, for uh, bringing this forward. Uh, I was wondering when you first sponsored this bill, I, I, I forgot that you had a cabin up on the, on the river, and I'm thinking, you know, Lansing doesn't usually have this, but maybe they do. But uh, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And seeing no further uh, questions, I appreciate you coming down to Lansing today to testify.